Cleveland or Houston. We we talked about this on Sunday night. At Sunday Sunday night, it opened at two. My first instinct, I said to you, was Houston. Your first instinct was Cleveland. It moved down to one and a half. It is now moved up from one and a half back to two to two and a half. I have a, to use your very big word, big word for the birthday boy, plethora. <laughs> I have a plethora. Did I use that right? You did. You nailed oh, it. Wow. Shocking. Yeah. No, you nailed it. Smarter <laughs> with age, my friend. It's what happens. Yeah. You get older, all you got left is your vocabulary. It must have been on my, you know, you turn your page in your calendar, you get every day you get a new word. It must have been <laughs> the word of the day. That's your word for your birthday. Um, <laughs> I'm going to give you some stats before you tell me why you like Cleveland, because I know you do. <laughs> Texans were six and three at home this year. Mm -hmm. Okay. One of those losses was without CJ Shroud when Joe Flacco and Amari Cooper had the game of their lives and Cooper had 265 yards receiving. Again, C.J. Stroud didn't play. C.J. at home in eight games, 2,500 yards passing, nine yards per completion, 17 touchdowns, 310 yards per game, 108 passer rating. The Browns' defense on the road. Average rushing yards gained is nearly two yards higher. Gave up twice as many touchdown passes nearly three yards more per pass attempt in one fewer game on the road than at home. So eight games versus nine games. They gave up 112 more points and allowed 30 points per game. They went three and five on the road. I know it's a new season. I know playoffs are different. I know CJ Stroud is a rookie. As Jay Cutler might say, don't care. You should though. You should. It is a, it's a real thing. It's just really tough as a rookie playing in the playoffs because it's so different. And people can tell you how it's different and how it's it, it's a different feeling. But you don't know until you play, and that's what the players keep talking about. So um, I, I want to be on Chad's side. And luckily for me, the playoffs, I can be very patient. I can pick my spots because the books will take money. Like this, this is the kind of games they will take money on any of these games. It's not like the regular season where – you know, they take positions, they take spots, and they don't really take that much money with playoffs. They're happy to take money based on any game. Um, you know, obviously, if you're someone that's limited better and you're limited on betting online, it's different. I tell people all the time, if, if you get banned, you got to start getting your out of bed, driving to the books, all right? Put the mask on, suck it up like the rest of us. Um, <laughs> but online about being banned. Everyone gets banned. Uh, this is... Just a classic game, though, which Chad's talking about. Like, if this gets to plus three, I'm going to have to take Houston. So it really is a numbers game here where I want to take Flacco, the veteran quarterback, with Jim Schwartz, the veteran defensive coordinator, against a rookie head coach and a rookie defense and a rookie, you know, quarterback. And it's all just so young for Houston. They're a year or two early. Like, it's incredible what they've done. Obviously, they had some luck, right? They had a lot of things break their way. The Jaguars going one of five down the stretch helped. Um, but, yeah, the – the Joe Flacco story, Chad, like it's it's really lined up for him and this Browns team to make a crazy run. And I just I want to believe in the Browns so bad. That's the hardest part here. But um, Chad's talking about the line movement and it's it's moving towards the Texans. And that's where the value is going to be. Like if this gets to plus three, that's that's the value play on Houston. But um, come Sunday. If this is still under three, Chad, I'm, I'm probably going to end up taking the Browns. It's just it's just the Joe Flacco, all everything about it. I feel – I can't believe I'm saying this. I feel confident as Joe Flacco as a road favorite if it's under three. Do you have this rated? No, I got it. I got a value right now for Houston. I got this at two. So I, I should have took – I should have taken the one and a half. But at the time, I was just like – it feels too easy. I didn't trust that number at all. And um, no, it's it's a good number. Like the, the books are sharp. They know what they're doing. So the professionals, they came in, they moved the number two and a half. Like that's that's what it should be. Like if it gets the three, I know pros, other pros are just waiting to slam that number because you got the one and a half and you can get the three now. I know it sounds stupid, but that's actually a nice, that's a nice middle play. Like it, it's shocking how at times it lands on two or three. So um, that's what's going to happen. If they do move to three, that's a big deal because the books know they're going to have guys trying to play both sides. Uh, you mean you want to Milman in because that's what <laughs> we call 
the middling right now. How much do you change your power rankings for the playoffs? Or how do you adjust them? How do you incorporate playoffs into power ratings? A lot goes into it, but it's it's honestly more about going with your gut and what other people are hearing. Models don't really mean in such a small sample. Like, you think a model can predict that run that Joe Flacco had with the Ravens? You think models can predict Nick Foles having that run with the Eagles team? It's like, no, it's it, those things are tough where if the numbers say, like that Eagles team we were just talking about, if, if the numbers say that has an incredibly good D-line, their defense is better than people are giving them credit to. They actually are pretty good offensively. There's not that big of a difference between Nick Foles and Wentz. Some some people can find crazy value that way and go on these crazy runs. But, you know, for someone like me, last year was the odd. They were like very – last year was weird, right? We talked about last year. It was both one seeds made it to the Super Bowl. I was all in on those two one seeds. I talked about it the whole playoff run, bet them both the whole run. Um, that's not normal. That's usually not like that for me. I don't really like taking that because we see all the time in football, it's a one game, winner take all. Random is going to happen. Teams match up well. Teams get hot. That's what I'm banking on this year. I think we're due for a crazy wild card runner. So, um, like, we're again, we're going to go through these games here. Chad's going to start picking up on how I view a lot of these games. Like I, I do like a couple of these underdogs this week. Uh, this is a uh, luck rankings under game, according to Nick Giffen. In the playoffs, the past five years, luck rankings under games uh, or – luck total games with a number that is in the range of what are it's complicated to say but a let's just say luck rankings game 29 and 11 against the total i'm not saying this well at all matt mitchell you'll clean this up live listeners i'm sorry nick giffen says this is a luck rankings total game luck rankings total games in the playoffs the past five years 29 and 11 72 percent against the spread so the total on this has been 44 and a half it got bet down to 44 also home dogs the past 20 years in the playoffs 15 12 and 2 against the spread but 9 9 and 2 against the spread in the wild card round but home dogs less than a field goal in any round nine, two and one against the spread since 2000. So everything you're saying is right. I like to me, I haven't bet the, I haven't bet the Texans yet because I wanted to follow up on the conversation because I was trying to rock like why you loved Cleveland. And then yesterday I was doing my research and, you know, recited all these, the litany of stats and was still trying to figure out why does he like Cleveland? And like, I'm now I'm just waiting for the number to get to three. Yeah. Yeah, that's that, that to me feels like a good move. And then if it does move down, she give Chad even more confidence. That means a professional finally came in and hit this Houston team where I think most pros like me right now are just waiting. The pros I know came in on the Browns. They moved the number down to one and a half and they hit it. They moved up and now they're just kind of waiting for that Houston three. Well, look, the money and the tickets are all coming in on Cleveland right now. So I would expect that the number is going to get to three. Uh, and these lines have been moving late on game day, probably more than I've ever seen in a season. Like that last two hours before the game, we're seeing pretty decent sized movements around key numbers. 